Those employment numbers that came out from the government on Friday, you know, the news really wasn't that the unemployment rate dropped to the lowest point in about five years. It's that the number of jobs created was kind of meager. Let's talk with Brent Schutte. He's market strategist with BMO Global Asset Management. You know, what, Brent, it's kind of odd because these seem to be at odds with a lot of other positive numbers about the economy. Right. There was a lot of good data actually last week that didn't really jive with these uh, numbers. And so I think you need to take them with a grain of salt. One, we've talked about revisions. So these will be revised. Uh, and two, if you yeah, look Yeah, but the last two were, months were revised downward. Right, and they could be revised back up. Oh. Uh, there's a lot of revisions that happen in, in economic data, and we always need to keep that in mind. I think the bigger data that came out last week, um, jobless claims hit a five-year low. The really big number that I, I think people should focus on is the ISM manufacturing. That employment index actually ticked back up for the first time in a few months, and is actually at 54.4, is a pretty high number. In fact, if you look back from 1990 to 2003, just to put that in context, and above 50 is good, and magnitude higher is better. Uh, there was one number from 1990 to 2003 that was higher than 54.4. Take it back to 1984. There were five numbers from 1984 to 2003 wow. that were higher. And so this paints the manufacturing renaissance, uh, and it actually is more forward-looking than the backward-looking jobs data. Isn't that interesting? Because I know uh, July was a huge banner month for car sales, which is a big component of manufacturing, and it sounds like in other sectors as well. Yeah. I mean, parts of the economy are actually doing very well. And so I don't think the 162 is any cause for concern. You know, these jobs numbers, as, as weak as they are, uh, there's also the point that these aren't really big jobs. These aren't high-paying permanent jobs in many cases. Right. And that's kind of a point of contention with me. So if you look back, uh, people who lost their jobs during the recession were typically ages 25 to 34 and people with less than a college education. And so as you start adding people back to the payrolls, it's kind of common sense that those are the kind of people that actually will come back in and be the first ones to be rehired. And actually, if you look at people with a college degree or more, we're actually, there's more people employed today than there was in 2007, 2008, before the recession. Um, if you have some college degree, you're about even. And so it's really the lower paying jobs that are the first ones that have to come back. Yeah. Well, your point again, though, you've made before, a college degree pretty much is worth the investment. Right. I mean, there are certainly, I think you have to be a little more picky than you used to be. It used to be told to me that, you know, just go get a college degree in anything that you want and you'll be fine. I think nowadays you actually have to take a little time and figure out maybe what you want to do and, and go to the right college and make sure you're making the right investment. Brent, real quick, uh, should 200,000 be the number we're looking for in terms of job creation each month? Yes, I think that's the number that you're going to have. There are structural impediments still in the economy that I think aren't going to go away anytime soon. And so 200,000 is actually a pretty good number and it will drive the unemployment rate down. I do think the economy is getting better, and so you could actually have some a little bit higher numbers in the future. Brent Schutte with BMO Global Asset Management. Thanks so much. Thank you.